Yo, 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 what's up, my G? What's happening, family? How you feeling? I'm straight, bro. You sub? Man, chilling, bro. Stand out the way, you know. I already know how I go. Man, how you and the fam holding up, man, with this crazy time we in right now? Man, we straight, man. Just trying to stay busy, stay active, you know, working, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to get to it, uh, keep making stuff happen. Uh, but that's about it, bro. Everybody healthy, so I can't complain at all. Facts, facts. Man, once, you know, I appreciate you for taking time out today to join me, you know what I'm saying, on my podcast. Uh, some of these questions, bro, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot a little bit, you know, but it's all love, though. I ain't going to do you too dirty. Oh, okay, then. Let's do it. Let's talk right. about it then. Okay, but uh, for those who don't, you know, not too familiar with you, um, just give them a quick rundown, you know, where you from, you know, how was it growing up for you and stuff like that. My love? Yeah, there you go. I can hear you now. You hear me? Yeah, I got a call. My bad. Okay. Now, I was saying, for those who are not too familiar with you, just give us a quick rundown of where you're from and how was it for you growing up, you know, stuff like that. Uh, From Chicago, West Side. Uh, To be honest, I lived all over the West Side, to be honest. Ain't no particular spot, but I was born on, like, Keystone and Augusta, but I was raised on North Avenue, the whole North Avenue, Avenue from, like, all stand through Laramie, pretty much. You feel me? So, pretty yeah. much that area all through the Austin neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So the first question I always start off with, bro, is who is the goat? MJ, Kobe, or Braun? And if you could put them in order, unless you got a different goat, you go by. I mean, the goat is uh, MJ, of course. Uh, Braun, my favorite player. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I will put him second, and then I'm a fan of Kobe too, but I will have to put him third. So it's MJ, Kobe. Me, MJ, uh, LeBron, then Kobe. Let me ask you this. Do you think Bron could ever pass MJ if he get, like, a couple more, couple more rings, a couple more points? I think he it, can, it, it's a wrap. I think, he, I think he could be a conversation, but I, I think I definitely feel like he could sit at that table for sure. But – it's hard to be to be MJ. He's six for six, man. That's that's perfection. You feel me? I think that's yeah. what put put MJ over the top. I mean, LeBron obviously gonna play more years and 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 put up more buckets, rebounds, and assists. They just two different players. He's definitely great. I got him too all the time in my opinion. You feel yeah. me? But MJ was just a, it was just a different level of perfection. You know, ain't, right. ain't, ain't, ain't many ain't many stories written like that. Facts. Okay. Uh, for you, when you was growing up as a shorty and you was, you know, hooping, who was the players that you were, like, watching film on, you know what I'm saying, kind of highlighting, taking moves from, All right. stuff like that? I mean, as a shorty, I, uh, I think the first person I came across was uh, Luther Head. He lived uh, down the block from me. So, uh, Lou Head, Will Bynum, and players with Sharon. Sharon was, like, the guy for me. Sharon Collins was the guy for me. I pretty much studied that man. And everything that he did, yeah. Uh, yeah. So those, those, those were the kind of the players that I kind of looked up to as a shorty, watching them dudes uh, go at it and be killers in the city. I kind of tried to model myself after that. That's what kind of really wanted me to take basketball serious. Facts. Okay. Uh, so if I was to ask you to give me your top five NBA players in the league right now, everybody healthy, Ooh. what would be your five? Man, that's tough, shorty. Uh. I mean, I'm going to go Bron, KD. Bron, KD, AD, AD, Ant Davis. Okay. Uh, sheesh. The last two. Kawhi. Okay. Uh, right now. I don't know. I kind of want to say James Harden, but I, I like Giannis too. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? So that's. So uh, that's that's five A and B, Giannis and, okay. and, and James Hart. That's how I'm you ain't gonna go, you ain't gonna throw no Steph or Dame in there or nothing. I like them, but I don't think they top five. They like in the six seven range, seven okay. eight range. You feel me? That I, I think those those fives is you can put them in as heavy hitters, man. You can't. It's right. hard, but yeah. I, I think I think it's Bron and, and KD league for sure. Okay, they're, they're my top two. Facts. I respect that. Mm -hmm. Um, for you, do you have a favorite basketball moment in your career? For you personally, man, to be honest, I got so many moments, man. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I can't, I can't, I can't. I I would like to say, uh, I want to say it's it's two when uh when I when I finally signed my letter of intent to 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 play college ball to play Division one ball and because that was just big for not only myself but my family it was I was kind of the first one to do that yeah at that level so I would say that and when I finally got to college uh making the NCAA tournament was kind of a childhood dream for me. So yeah. those two, man, I, I can't really uh I can't really pick which one the best. You know what I'm saying? They both they, special, bro. They both special to me, you feel me? So yeah. uh it's it's different in its own way, man. So those are my two. Okay. Now being from the shy, bro, um it's a Chicago known for having a you know the killer guards, bro. You know what I'm saying? Guard heavy. Mm-hmm. Who is some of the toughest people that you ever messed up against? You know what I'm saying? That you in the city. Of like, damn. In the city? You can do the city, you can do, you know what I'm saying, college, wherever, you know, stuff like that. Uh, well, let, let, let's do the city. Uh in the city, man, I think it was a couple, man. Uh Amar Starch was one of them. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh Fabian Harris. Yup. He just tapped one. in too, yo. Yeah, Fabe. Oh yeah, shout out my boy Fabe. Fabe tough, man. Um whew. Uh, those two probably. I mean, and I matched up against Darius Smith. That was that was a pretty good battle. Smitty Smitty was pretty good in his time, but uh, yeah, yeah, man, those off the top, those off the top was was some of the guys that I, I had some battles with, man. Well, now was that just like pickup ball? Was that pro am? Nah, I mean, I mean, we weren't really playing too much pro am at the time. That was like AU ball. That was okay. like high school ball. You feel me? I mean, you want to just go off. Pro Am ball. We just talking about high school. We just talking about right now. Or what? Whichever. We about Whichever. Golf. You got some memorable ones. Oh, Whichever yeah. one. Uh, yeah, I had. I, I matched up with Walt Lemon. That that was pretty tough. When we talking about older, I matched up with some of the, the legends. You know, uh, Tony Bennett was a problem. Even though I Indeed. played with him for most of the most of the time, I played with him. But we also played against each other. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, TV tough. Yeah, TB TB was a bucket, man. He, he called himself Mr. Forty, but he more like Mr. Fifteen plus now, man. But he old. That's my boy. I can say that he old now. <laughs> yeah, TB tough. Like I said, because I was talking to somebody, and I was like, man, there's so many guards that come from the city, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like hard, every man. day. Like if you play the pro am or you play that JLM, guarantee you match it up against somebody every night, bro. Yeah, it's it's hard to really kind of say, man. Like every night, like ain't nobody honoring no name. That's what's so special about Chicago basketball. Like nobody really honoring no names. They don't care if you rank. They don't care if you a pro. They don't care if you yeah. in the league. You know what I'm saying? You gotta come with it. You know what I mean? Because people gonna try you. You feel me? Yeah. So it's hard to even say just uh you know any man. Oh, Phil Green too. I, I like him too. Oh, Phil yeah. was tough. Phil yeah. tough. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, for you, bro. Who was that person, or was it a person, or how was, how would you, how were you introduced into the game of basketball? Uh, well, my my grandfather kind of put the ball in my hands. I mean, he bought me a little Fisher Price rim as a kid, and I was just playing on that. He played the game of my uncles. I had like, I spent a lot of time with my uncles. We grew up like brothers, man. So uh, they was like six four, six five. So they kind of put the ball in my hands, you know, as a shorty knocking me around. That's what I kind of got my toughness from. I kind of always played with people that was older than me. So yeah. I, w- I would say my uncles put the ball in my hand, but it was kind of natural just watching games with them, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and just being under them all the time. They they kind of paved the way for me. They didn't, they didn't really make it as far as, like, as far as at the level, but they played high school mm-hmm. ball for, like, or they weren't, like, big names. Well, like yeah. I said, for me as a shorty, just going to get something every day, six four, six five, athletic. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that kind of helped me uh, get the ball rolling. Now, did you play any other sports? You know, as a, as a shorty, you played whatever your friends did. You football, baseball, whatever. Or was yeah. it always basketball for you? Nah, I was a park district kid, man. Uh huh. So I, I attended Amundsen Park over there on off North Avenue and, and Gilwood Park. Um, we played everything for real. I played football a little bit. But obviously, I was so much better. I was really, I was actually good at football. But the love was just for basketball. My my pops actually was a really good football player, and he was uh trying to get me to play both. But you know, I stopped playing AU. You know what I mean? I had a little clout. I had a little rank. I was a little ranked and stuff. So 
Yeah. I just kind of felt like, all right, I'm going to get my scholarship playing basketball. So I took that more serious. Even high school, my high school coach, he was my gym teacher, but he used to beg me to play, beg me to play. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I just didn't have the time as far as like, I mean, I did have time, but after basketball, I was back to summer training, off season training, AU. I just played all year round. So I just yes. felt like it wasn't worth it at the time. I w- Now, I wish I would have done. I think it would have made me a better athlete. And just to get myself, you know, make me more versatile. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, around what moment or what age did you really realize, like, all right, like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Okay. Uh, Well, I started playing when I was, like, eight years old. Serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in part. Uh, I want to say when I became around, around seventh, eighth grade, man, I started, like, getting like I just I was just working out every day just playing ball every day and I just you know noticed my game going into another level that's when I started to get right I had a lot of hype early you know what I mean so that's when I started getting a lot of hype and then I'm like okay you know what I'm saying this this for me you know what I mean then yeah. around my eighth grade freshman year that's when the college coaches started coming in you know what I mean uh, and then they just took off hey you hey you really made me you know what I mean because I was yeah. just a, a young kid you know what I'm saying? From from uh, I went to Love It Elementary right on the, in the Austin ne- uh, neighborhood. But uh, yeah, right up there that when I started playing AU, we 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 had a great group of guys: Mike McCall, Eddie Denard, mm-hmm. uh, Byron Christmas, uh, we Tommy Woolridge. We had a we had a good group of guys, and we was just killing everything. We was all thirsty, man. We was all uh, coming from the bottom, trying to make a name for ourselves. So. When that AU spurt come, came, I just was like, all right, this is it, man. Like, I, I can do something special. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's what, what it was. What team did you run with for AAU? I, I started playing with Illinois Heat and then um, Terry Head. Shout out to T Head. Uh, yeah, I played for Illinois Heat and then. Okay. Yeah. Um, not to get too personal or anything, bro, but what's something that you overcame that kind of that made you proud of that you the man you are now? I mean, just the doubt, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, obviously, like I said, I was a uh, high, highly recruited coming out of eighth grade as far as going to high school, you know what I mean? I yeah. was one of the top guards in the city, so Foreman was not known, Foreman High School was not known for like top level players or you yeah. know what I mean sending players to uh high, high major schools and stuff like that so I just kind of like took it upon myself to challenge myself like I had a, I actually went to Crane for a, a small amount of time you know what I mean because they kind of wanted me to be that next Sharon Collins but my heart was with forming it with Mike McCall and the group that I came in with so you know, a lot of people's like, oh, you know, Foreman never did this. It's going to be harder. You know what I mean? You should go to a school that has experience in sending this player there. You know what I mean? And I just want to do it my way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like, I feel like, you know what I mean? I just want to prove myself that if you're a good player, you, I don't matter where you go, somebody going to see you. You know what I yeah. mean? And uh, that, was one, that was the first thing that I wanted to uh, accomplish, like, just to prove everybody wrong, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Just because I'm at this school don't mean I'm not going to be recognized for my talent. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and, it, and it's crazy that you say that because, like I said, nowadays everybody going to Simeon, right. Whitney, exactly. uh, you exactly. know what I'm saying, no powerhouse school. So for you to be like, you know what, it don't matter where I'm at, I'm, I'm going to hoop. That's right. a, You right. know what I'm saying? It don't matter who around me. It's one ball, one, one you know what I'm saying? See, that's the one thing. One way to play. Like, I mean, of course I could have went to one of those schools. It was yeah. like, I could have went to any school I pretty much wanted to go to, but it, it wasn't about that for me. Like, I, that ain't in my blood, bro. I don't want to play with, I would love to play with those guys, but I I, I want to build my own legacy with the guys that I built myself with, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So with guys like Mike McCall and Eddie and, and Tommy and, and everybody else, you know what I mean? We, we had something special, bro, and we did it our way and we all made something happen out there. We proved everybody wrong. So that was the uh, that was that was that was more that was it for me. You know yeah, I mean? and, and we made it happen. Like when I tell you, a lot of 
high major college schools came in that little small gym to see what Foreman had going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and when we left that school, we left a legacy. Like we 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 didn't win it all, unfortunately, but we was number one, number two in the state. We was top forty in the country. You know what I mean? Which was yeah. unheard of. We made history. We did what we set to do. You know what I mean? And yeah. It was just a, a beautiful feeling to see it play out that way because we we manifest that for real. Yeah. And that's crazy you said it, because that kind of going to my next question. Like, how was the recruiting process for you? You know what I'm saying? Was it somewhat stressful? Did you enjoy it? You know, how was that for you? It was stressful. I did enjoy it because, uh, like I said, as a kid, man, you dream of those moments of having yeah. those schools to come check you out and give you a, a, a shot. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I said, I'm from the west side of Chicago, man. I know my mother ain't have. 40, 50,000 a year to pay, to pay for me to go to school, you know what I mean? So just to have people even interested in investing in me was a, was a blessing. But, man, just like I said, my recruitment was, like, literally insane, man. Like, it's, it's public record, man. I had schools from uh, New Mexico to Illinois to Kansas to Kentucky to Baylor to Wisconsin, like, Pretty much a lot of schools came into that gym, you know what I'm saying, to check us out. And these weren't just interests. It was offers, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was offers. So, uh, did you go on – how many visits, visits did you go on? Did you go on all those visits? I did not. Those uh -huh. those was uh, – I can go on order. My first – I can remember, bro, like, yeah. my first offers well, – my first, my first offer was from New Mexico. I went to mm -hmm. an elite camp. I got invited to elite camp to go to New Mexico. I went to New Mexico and killed it. And that's when I kind of kind of kind of started getting uh noticed nation national national uh ranking wise mm -hmm. or whatever. So uh yep. After New Mexico, I went to Iowa State. Kill Iowa State got an offer from them. Then uh I think it was Indiana. I went to Indiana camp, did the same thing. Jamar Tonton, you know Tonton, Jamar yeah. Ellis, DeAndre, they was, I had went to a visit. They was my host there at the time. Oh yeah. So, yeah, so I went to a visit there. Um, then after that, I think Wisconsin, and then they started flowing in, man. Like, it was it was crazy. But uh, at the end of my senior, to answer your question, at the end of my senior, I only took two visits. I went to New Mexico, and I went to South Florida, and I got sold on USF, man. It was – Tampa was amazing. That's kind of a second home for me. But uh, I was supposed to go to Baylor next um, I never made it to Baylor. Like I said, I committed to South Florida uh, after my second visit. I was supposed to go to Baylor now. Wisconsin was next, and I believe like South Carolina, I believe, or some. I forget. I, it was. I think that was the photo. That was the strong photo. I forgot who the fifth. What, what was the what What was the the reason that you went that you chose South Florida? It was the weather? <laughs> you know, to be from Chicago, man, these winters ain't no joke. Well, I mean, like yeah, that the weather had a lot to do with it, man. I just just the whole idea of uh, uh, at the time the Big East Conference was uh, was amazing, bro. So like I said, it's any kid childhood dream to like go playing a, a high major conference like that. The Big East was cracking. So that the weather, just being away from Chicago, I already knew I I couldn't stay in Chicago. I'm a pretty strong mind guy, but I got a lot of homies that always yeah. you know what I mean want to be up under me. So yeah. I have to lock in and, and go far away. You know what I mean? So. uh yeah, it was just different for me. I wanted something different for myself, you know what I mean? I wanted a chance to really, really be on my own, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I wanted to pursue this career in basketball, and I felt like that would hand, hand, help me transition into uh, being a pro, like being yeah. learning how to be away from my family for a long amount of time. Right. So uh, it was a lot. The system, the coaches, uh, the year before I committed there, they had a lot of success. I think they had – uh, they had drafted a, a guy, first round pick, Dominique Jones or whatever, and um, yeah. they had went to the tournament. So uh, I just got, I just got caught up. I, I got caught up in that man. The campus was beautiful, the gym was amazing, the fans was amazing. You know the uh, the I went to the college football game and they play their home games at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Stadium. So. Oh, yeah, he was lit. Man, it was busting. He was lit. It was, 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 <laughs> was so, bro, like, no lie, man. I, I I even went to the game and was sitting next to Vicky V. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it was it was crazy, man. Just, it, it was a crazy experience. Yeah. For sure. So then you, how long were you at South Florida for? Because I know you went to Valpo too, right? 
Yeah, I went to South Florida for a year and a half, almost two years. I left in like uh, the middle of my sophomore year. Okay, and then you went to Valpo, and I saw you was you was balling. Was yeah, it? I went to Valpo, and like like I said, South Florida was a it was a good experience for me. I don't regret it. Yeah, it just didn't work out. You know what I mean? When yeah. I went there, the system changed. You know, the coaches changed his whole offense, so it it just didn't fit my style of play. Yeah. Like, to this day, I still can call a man. We can, you know, have good conversations. It's not no bad blood. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. Uh, and I was starting and everything. Even when I was starting, I just wasn't feeling it. It just wasn't. It just, I just had that feel that this will help me get to where I need to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At that time, I'm a loyal guy, but I had to do what was best for me. But yeah. transferring to Valpo was one of the best decisions I made in my life. Like, you know what I'm saying? They... They trust me. They put the ball in my hand, and it just went from there, man. I have nothing but success stories about yeah. me going to Valpo, man. Like, now, what was the reason for Valpo? Did they reach out to you when you um... – I mean, once they figured out that I was transferring, the board got out pretty fast. And um, uh -huh. a mentor of mine, who's now a mentor of mine, uh, Roger Powell, he uh, he played at Illinois. Now he's now at Gonzaga. Uh he, he he gave me my pops a call, not me a call. He gave my pops a call and was saying like, "Hey man, I know he transfer. We would love to check him out. You know, let's get him on campus. You know, what I mean, we we can use a guy like him on the team." And I took a chance, and it was a perfect fit. Now I had the schools looking at me, but uh, I don't know. I just I just felt like Valpo was it it, it felt right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and the opportunity yeah. presented itself. They needed a guy. You know what I'm saying? With the experience that I had, with the toughness and the abilities that I had. So I took a chance on it and it worked, man. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, for you playing, you know, playing different levels of the game, what were some of the biggest adjustments you had to make, you know what I'm saying? Playing different levels of the game. As far as like playing from like the big east to uh to like Yeah, the, like you know what I'm saying, from the high school to college, the college, oh, and, you okay. know what I'm saying? Beyond. Okay. Well, high school, to be honest. Well, my senior year, I would, my senior year, I played hurt the entire year, so it was tough playing and my, my my senior year. But uh, once I got healthy after my senior year, the transition was good. Like talent wise, my freshman year, I was ready. But just the speed of it, the like I said, this the Big East now. Like yeah. I'm playing against Kimber Walker. I'm playing against. Yeah. Jimmy Butler, I'm playing against Jay Crowder. Like these, uh, you know what I'm saying? At the time, they were good players as well. So. Every night, the Big East, like, you're going against Syracuse. You're going against Every Villanova. Night. You're going against, uh, I don't know, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh. I can go on and on. So it yeah. was just a different level of speed and, and competition that I had to adjust to. Now, about time the middle of my freshman year, I was adjusted. I was ready. It was kind of like I had to get my feet wet and, and really figure it out, which is common for a freshman. Yeah. Obviously, in my man, I'm thinking I'm going to go and dominate, but it didn't happen like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I worked on my game, got better, got better. And was ready. So my sophomore year, I was rocking. You know what I mean. But playing at that, playing in the, at the highest level in the Big East helped me because when I went to Valpo, I, I was already primed and ready. You know what I'm yeah. saying. So I knew exactly what to do. So I went in and joined a, 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 some more talent, and we just took on from there. Like we was, I think we we won we won regular season my junior year conference, and we went to the tournament. We won both championships. You know what I mean. And unfortunately, we lost to Michigan State in the NCAA tournament, who had like twelve pros on their team. But uh, yeah, man, the the adjustment was up and down. Like I said, I yeah. had to increase my level when I went to the Big East, and then I can't say that I can't I can't say that it went down in, in, in Valpo because we had some some talented players in um in the Horizon League, Wisconsin Green Bay, Al McKinney. You know, he yeah. played that played against him, Kiefer Sykes. Yeah. Uh, some old Chicago dudes, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. you have to come with it in that too, but playing in the Big East had me primed and ready, for sure. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Now, how did you adjust to, to the college lifestyle? You know what I'm saying? Come from high school, you may have practice at the school for an hour and a half, two hours, and you go home. But college is all day, every day, you know what I'm saying? Waking up four or five in the morning, all Friday night, go to sleep to 10 o'clock that night, you know what I'm saying? So, how did you adjust to that? How long yeah. did it take you? Well, I went to uh, my freshman year. I ended up taking like a summer school course. 
so because we had we were selected to play to represent the USA team, I went to Brazil, so I was able okay. to get my feet wet uh, as far as like school wise. So by the time the real season started and the regular school started, I was kind of I want to say prepared a little bit. Yeah, but uh, it was tough, man. Just the whole schedule, like it was intense. You know what I mean? My schedule was like, hey, wake up at seven, you got class at eight. You yeah. know what I mean? Or you might, matter of fact. Bump that. I wake up at five because we got boot camp from six to to seven. You feel yeah. me? I take a shower, run a class, get class or whatever. Got two or three classes. I'm probably done by like one. You feel me? Get some lunch. You got practice. You feel yeah. me? Like you got practice from two to four or something like that or however long it was. And after that, you got study hall. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Then you know that's just something that you. You might not get your homework done. You got something. You got to go home and do something. Then you, you yeah. got to have a social life. You got to eat. You got to. I'm in Florida. I want to talk to my family. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you look up, the day gone. And that's every day. I don't think people, like a lot of people, like all oh, athletes are spoiled. They do all this. But they don't really look at the, the, the grind that we go through. This every yeah. day. Every yeah. day. You know what I'm saying? We literally waking up from 7, 7 in the morning. Sometimes five, six in the morning, and ain't done with our day until eight o'clock at night. Sometimes yeah. I had a class from six to eight. You feel me? I had an afternoon class after practice that I had to go to. You know what I'm saying? It depends on how your schedule was, but unfortunately, I had to be in that class. So yeah. I'll get done with that, let alone got to go home, got to eat, got to talk to the family, got to talk to everybody. And don't, don't even include the travel yet. Don't, I ain't even include the travel yet. That's yeah. just regular first semester after orientation vibe. You feel me? That ain't even flying to Syracuse and coming back. You know what I mean? That ain't, yeah. that ain't including that at all. So how long, so like, what do you say, like the middle freshman year that you really was like, all right, I kind of got this college thing. I got it locked in now. Yeah, freshman year, I mean, middle of my freshman year, like I said, I, I'm honest with myself, bro. I keep it a buck. Like I said, the middle of my freshman year, I was like, yeah, I'm ready now. Like, okay. they can, they, I, I can make it happen. Like, my confidence was there. You know what I'm saying? I was stronger. I was strong. I was faster. My IQ level had got a lot better. You know what I mean? Just the, the whole adjustment was just, it was just a feel. Like, I'm the type of guy, it don't take me long to catch on. Yeah. So once I got adjusted and really saw what this was really about, I was ready. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now, and then after the season, I got a whole summer to even build on what I already didn't learn. You know what I'm saying? So now, sophomore year, what you finna tell me? Like, I'm ready. You, are, you I already me? got it by I'm yeah. All, I'm already ready. You feel me? Yeah. So I was excited about that. But it, like I said, unfortunately, it just didn't work out how I wanted to work out. I handled everything I was supposed to on my end. So yeah. everything else was out of my control. I'm the type of guy where I worry about what I can control. And when, that, when, it, when it ain't when I can't deal with anything else, then it's time for me to move on. You feel me? Facts. Facts. Yeah. All right, so this question is definitely my favorite to ask anybody, uh -oh. especially from Chicago, because a lot of them kind of stumble on this one. Uh -huh. If you can create an all-time five from the shot, Ooh let's say you're going around the world to play for money. Play for that money right now? Are we talking about prime? Or are we talking about all right time, now? all time prime, no, all time. time? Not included. Okay, I can't include myself. I'm just gonna put five. Hey, look, hey, hey, if you include yourself, just give me a six. Man. I ain't gonna. I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna include myself. We gonna go. We just gonna go five. I'm gonna, come off, I'm gonna come off the bench, man. We can I see. Bet. Uh, all time five from the shot. All time some people. So, some people have been taking KG. If you want to take KG, I'll let you take KG. Well, KG is in there. KG okay, at the bet. four. KG at the four. Let me see. Okay. Uh. At my one, it's so hard at the one. It's so, so many, hard. So many, bro. It's so hard. So I'm going to go to the two. <laughs> <laughs> at the two, man, Joe, I'm going to have to go Sid Banks. Okay. Go Sid Banks at the two. Okay. Uh, three. Ooh, three ah, Tom Tom. I think I'm Tom Tom. Monster. Four KG. Five. I don't, I'm trying to think of too many fives, dog. 
I gotta. I, don't, I can't. I can't think about. I can't think right now on the fives. But I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go, go with. Uh, just go I'm with AD. Go with oh, AD. You right. AD. AD. Okay. Like, AD ain't really. You can, I'm gonna say him as a five. Okay, I'm gonna go AD. Switch him and KG. I can't put KG out of that. Well, KG, you can't you can't count KG as a shot. How we doing that? How no, 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 I'm saying that? switch up and put him at the five. Put AD okay, I'm gonna put AD. I like I be like big job, but I'm gonna put AD. This point guard position is tough, bro, because I either want to go with Sharon or Will Bonner, but I'm gonna go Sharon. I'm gonna go Sharon. I respect what you did because most people they just grab all the pros. Uh, they grab it. They oh, grab a D Rose, the D Wade. You know what I'm saying? Oh damn! Why am I tripping, bro? Mm. No, you can. Mm. I'm bogus. <laughs> you good, bro? Cause that's what I'm saying. Some people just grab all it's pros. So many they, like, it's easy. Off. I'm gonna grab all the pros, but like, nah. If you think about it, see if we going right now. If we going right now, my list is gonna be different. But I'm just going by these dudes in their prime, bro. That's okay. it. That's what I'm going off for. These dudes yeah. when they was at their all time best in the city. I'm not. I'm not necessarily yeah. going off. Right now, obviously, we we got D Way, we got Rose. That's why I ain't even really thinking AD. But sometimes, excluding those dudes, yeah. you got dudes that ain't even made it that can represent this city. Okay, a little so bit give more. me give me a five that's not all pros then. Oh, that not. So, but those still pros. They ain't in the NBA, but they pros. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. So like, if you can do okay, so let's just call it a neighborhood five. You know what I'm saying? Like you finna go play pickup at Moore Park or something like that. Hmm. You know, Moore Park used to be jumping. Facts. Yo, man, that's tough. I'm trying to see, bro. That's tough. You you got me thinking for real. Well, I'm gonna go with my two. I know who that is. That's Mr. Bennett. That's Mr. Forty. Uh Jesus, bro. I wanna say Steph Hanna, but like he a pro. Like them dudes are pros, bro. Yeah, it's hard, bro. Like it, it like it's it pros still did they shit, but I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, trying to Ooh. think. Uh, I'm trying to help you out. Let me see. Okay, Damn, at I the five, what, what? You just talking about now? Oh, Big Dre Thomas. You feel me? Like at the, the five, like who else? Chris Singletary. What am I doing? Yeah, yeah. Uh. What we need, we need a point guard and a, and a forward. Yeah, I like Ty Kent. Okay, you going that's crazy? That's I like you Ty going... Kent. I'm trying to see who's gonna be my one off the not non-professional. Even though those dudes kind of they pros though. Uh, for your one, I can't think of me. Anymore. For me, I will take Amari Sawyer. I'll tell you, I'll put Amari in there. Amari, I can't think of nobody else. That's the first one. That's what I'm saying. But those yeah. dudes are like, those ain't no regular dudes, though. Like, I was just trying to think of some real street basketball players. Those yeah. are regular dudes, though. But yeah. but, yeah, that's what I'm going with. So, that's Amari, thing. TB, Ty Kent, Chris Singletary, Big Dre. Yeah, we lit. Uh, okay, so if you could have five dinner guests, bro, any former rapper, from a president, family members that you could just sit at a table with and just chop it up about life, whatever. Who would be your five dinner guests, bro? My five dinner guests. Ho. Okay. Uh. Mike. Braun. Whole lot of money at that table already. Whole lot of brains at that table. They did man. Man. Uh, man, so many people. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Warren Buffett. Oh, Jesus. That's Last three. One. What's that? Three. What I say? Hove. You said Hove, Mike. Braun. Mike, Braun, Warren Buffett. You need one more. I can't think, bro. I'll help you out. A lot of people say Kobe. Oh. A lot of people say MLK, Malcolm X, Barack Obama. Oh, we saying people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah I'll put Barack in there. I'll put Barack in there. 
Facts. Okay. I like to be diverse, bro. I like to learn different type of ways. Like a lot of people want to. I mean, of course we want to. I just, I just like to get information from all type of people, all that do different things. You feel me? Yeah. Anybody so, that made it, bro. If I can get, some, anybody, if I can learn yeah. from you. If I can learn from you, I want to be around you. For sure. For sure. That's all right. What? About, uh, what has the game of basketball taught you that carries in everyday life? Basketball has taught me to carry in everyday life. Uh, having character, bro. Yeah. Like, just being – basketball has built – like, helped me gain a lot of relationships that I thought I'd never have. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, having good character, meet different people, and, and being able to use your resources through basketball was, like, a blessing to me. Like, I've met some amazing people just off – because I can hoop. You feel what I mean? Like, yeah. Like I said, I, I got friends all over the world, not just like, the country, the world. Like I call my buddies in Italy or you feel me, or play yeah. with people that I met throughout basketball. Just the the relationships and learning from like I said, I can learn from a teammate. You know what I mean? So just being around different people and being diverse and just learning, like learning from other everybody, like my abilities and learning and stuff like that. Thanks. Uh, give me your favorite hoop and shoe of all time. I like Kyrie's. <laughs> Kyrie's and Kobe's. Kyrie's and Kobe's. Kobe's Who's Kobe's, though? Kobe's. Uh, I don't. I can't think of the name of them, bro, but they the yeah. low-top joints. I don't, I don't mean the number of them, but I, I know they the lows. Bro. I can't do the, the high joints he had. <laughs> can't rock with them, huh? Nah, nah, nah. They the, they the low-top. But the, any, any Kyrie's, and, and I like Jordan 10. I'm the only ones I can hoop in the tens. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going for thirty in the tens. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I wore at my senior Val pole. The Jordan tens. I was going. Which ones? Uh, they just they was the steals. Yeah. Oh yeah, you was you were legendary hooping in the tens, huh? Was, yeah, the tens I had. Man, them joints was. Oh yeah, it was some. It was some buckets giving out in them joints. For sure. Oh. <laughs> for sure. I should have kept them assigned though, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Those should have been <laughs> in, the, in the case somewhere, bro. Don't yeah, never I take like, them out. Yeah, they, they, yeah. I'm bogus for getting rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your favorite basketball movie, bro. Oh, uh, I like A Blood of Rim, bro. A Blood of Rim, my favorite basketball movie. It, a lot of people might not agree, but I always get something about that movie, man. Yeah. Uh, the, the Kyle Watson story. This is, it, it's kind of speak for my story. You feel me? Yeah. Like he wanted to go to Georgetown so bad. He wanted the, yeah. the opportunity to play Division One, and you know, what I'm saying from the hood, and he just yeah. made it happen. So I just yeah. I actually replayed that in my head for myself. You feel me? Like yeah. that's I can relate to a board of Ram. I like he got game too. So the, those two is my but a board of Ram is not my number one for sure. No, I think everybody say uh, he got game. Yeah. Couple people said love and basketball, which kind of shocked me a little bit. But, I like. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Coach Carter guy. Coach Carter was the one for me, bro. That was dope. It was dope. It was dope. It's it's up there, but them, them yeah. two for me. He got game in in the butter rim, but it was just above the rim spoke to me. I would say that once. You yeah. feel me? So yeah. it ain't. I'm not saying it's a better movie. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm it's saying? more but personal I, for you. It's more personal. I can I can relate. I can relate. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay. All right, so these questions right here, bro, I want you to look at it as you the, you the GM of a team and you about to do a draft and you got to pick one of these two people I'm going to give you. So I'm going to give you two oh, names. You tell me who you'd rather have. You finna do me dirty. You finna I'm going to do you super dirty. <laughs> so first one, Bron or KD? Bron. Steph know. or Dame? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go Steph. I like Dane better though. I like Dane better, but I'm gonna have to go Steph. I um, can't pass up on him. We going hard, or we going Luca? God, <laughs> both of them dudes special though. That's the hard. That's the hardest one we had so far. I'm gonna go Luca. I'm not mad at that. I'll go Luca too. Luca just because. Luca, James Harden alone need to have his streaks. Like he's he's special, but yeah. he had these little spunks. I have yet seen Luca to hit a wall, yeah. even in the playoffs. You seen when he was making game winners. You feel me? Not saying yeah. Harden ain't capable of that. We just going off the history. Luca, yeah. Luca damn near top five to me. Yeah, 
Yeah. Every night he averaging a triple double, bro. Every yeah. night. So I, I, I I'm gonna go with Luca. Okay. We going Kawhi. We going Giannis. Kawhi. We going Brad Bill or Jimmy Butler. Bradley. Ooh. Okay. Bradley. Don't get your B. I ain't. I, I like Jimmy Butler, but I ain't. He and I think they two different people. You said yeah. Yoke Joy and B. Yeah. Jesus. I think for this one, it's all about what you like more. If you it's like all a about dominant like big more. man, or if Both you like dominant though. Yeah, but I'm saying like Joel B gonna get down there. He gonna, you know what I'm saying? Yoke more gonna he gonna hit you. He might diss that mug. You know what I'm saying? But we talking about for my team, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So okay, I, like, I feel like it's more of a personal for preference. Team, for, for, I'm gonna take. I mean, I like him be better, but for my team, who I just picked, I will yeah. get Yoka on that team. Yeah, man, it's gonna be a whole lot of. We got Bron, like Luka, Yoka. Like Yoka. IQ, right? You feel me? Like this brand. I'm yeah. not saying NBA ain't got it, but you can yeah. get dude Yoka Joker. To, he gonna make some decisions. You feel me? Yeah. And he gonna stay healthy. And yeah. He be hurt. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> we going Dirk or we going Tim Duncan? Gotta go, Timmy. Timmy D. Okay, we going Steve Nash, or Jason Kidd. God, least Steve Nash. That's hard. We going Mellow. We going Paul Pierce. Mellow. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We going. I don't know if Scott going. This one be different. We going Westbrook. We going D Rose. <laughs> Derrick Rose. No brain. We going Devin Booker or Donovan Mitchell. Ooh. I like Devin Booker. I like Devin Booker. Yeah, D-Book. Like D-Book. And the last one, we going AI, we going D-Wade. Why you do that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Why you do that? Why you do that, bro? Yeah. I can't pick on that one, bro. I can't. I can't, bro. I got no, I got two, but. <laughs> you can't do that one. That's probably the toughest one. That's the toughest one for sure. Me, I, I can't pass up on AI, man. I think D Wade, D Wade, well, number three because of AI, but D Wade accomplished so much more. Yeah. As far as like championships and, but AI was a he was a game changer. Like he changed yeah. the culture of basketball, just like Steph did. So that's why I, I'm going off the impact of the game, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go AI because I, I want the, I wanted to kind of be AI as a shorty, bro. I ain't gonna lie, yeah. the brains and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then this new one, this new one I just added. I gotta find it. Can't find it. Hold on, you might get a pass on this one. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna give one on top of my head real quick since I lost it. You know what I mean? We're gonna do a we're gonna do a start, bench, or cut. Let's do it. Magic Johnson. Yeah. Steph Curry. Allen Iverson. Shit. Okay. Damn, I'm mad I lost it. But that one's gonna, hard, too, so I'm going to use that one. We're going to start Magic. We're going to bench. <sighs> <laughs> start Magic. We're going to bench. We're going to bench AI. We're going we gonna, to we gonna cut Curry. You can always get you a, a shooter. You can get you Dane, bro. He's going to do the same stuff to yeah. Steph do. Yeah, we gon' we gon' we gon' bench we gon' we gon' cut we gon' cut Curry and bench out and start magic. Okay, that's, that's a good that's one. How, that. That's how I'm coming. I'm gonna add that to my notes then since I lost my other one. I think my other one was like Jason Tatum and all that, but I can't even remember. Uh all right, so now we're gonna go into music, bro. All right, bet. Give me your top five rappers of all time. Hmm. Hove, J. Cole, Wayne. Cole, J. Cole, Wayne, Pop. Ah, that last one, yeah. Yeah, that last one gonna be tough. Cause I can say, I can say Big. I can yeah. say Jada Kiss. Yeah, I like Ooh, Jada. Yeah. A lot of people might not say it, but I like Jada. It's yeah. a lot of. It's gonna be. This, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you my five B. And see, <laughs> it's gonna be big J. Cole, no, big J. The Kiss, my bad, mm -hmm. and Drake. Drake, 
I was gonna ask you, but a lot of people say Drake in top five. I think Drake top five already. You gotta put him in there, bro. I'm, I'm not a super duper fan of him either, but mm -hmm. I, I like his music. I like his music, yeah. but like, yeah, you gotta put him up there. You can't, you can't, you can't just run over him like that. You feel right. me? If you could listen to three albums, three albums, mixtapes, EPs, whichever, three of them for the rest of your life, Man. what would be the three you would take? Uh. Hove, uh, Blueprint, 50 Cent, Get Richard Don't Shit. Uh, it's too much, bro. I want to say Wayne so bad. Like, but Wayne got so many, though. Yeah, but what's that one? Um, golly, is that a... Uh, is that the drought? The drought three? No, which one? Is that? Drought three. I think that's the drought three. That's his. That's his best one, ain't it? I think. For my favorite one for Wayne is the the Carter. The album. Mm -hmm. The album Carter one. It's nice, but I, I you saying mixtapes too, right? Yeah, we could do any of them. Right, it's one of his mixtapes. I can't think he got so many of them. I can't. Think it's probably one of them. He got so many, bro. Yeah. It's probably one of them. It's one of them, just like legendary. <laughs> he just like I think he just like just recently we did it. I can't think of it, bro. But I'm gonna just put Wayne in there. I, don't, I can't think of his album. One of his mixtapes. Okay, who is like a musician or artist that like kind of like this may not pertain to you, but like you know how we always got that one. So like. For basketball, MJ was like everybody's like you know what I'm saying everybody looked up to him. He kind of right. had an impact on you. For musically, who was that person for you? If it, if there is one that kind of like the music, you know what I'm saying, kind of touched you differently. I got three that I could just relate to, bro. I can't give you one. But it's so hard. Yeah. Ho, J Cole, and Meek. Yeah, definitely. I love Meek. Dude. I love like I would say Meek. I can't put him over them dudes, but me, I, I, me, I'm a big fan of me. Facts. Big fan. Huge yeah. fan of me. I wanted to put him in my top five, but he ain't did enough to compare. Yeah, he ain't got nobody at work yet. Right. But me personally, love me. Yeah. For me, bro, it was, it was, it was Nip and it was G Herbo. See, Nip, I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm, I'm happy I got on Nip before he died because my homie, mm -hmm. my one of my teammates is from Cali. He used to always tell me, even back. Early 2010s, he man, nip, nip, nip. I just couldn't get jiggy with the West Coast vibe, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's he, different. It's definitely yeah, different. You know what I'm saying? But he definitely was talking. I just never gave him a chance. But before that last album, what was it? Uh, what's the name of it? Victory Lap. I actually gave that a chance, and this was well before he passed. I gave that a chance, and I was like, yo, like this nigga hard, you know what I'm saying? And that album was damn near with the album of the year, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that album was hard. The it's one of my top did, three. Yeah, the same thing I did with Pop Smoke too. I recently just had got on him, and I was like, yeah. damn, it was unfortunate that he, you know what I'm saying, had a right taking, but but yeah, Nip. And you said who? You said Nip, and who else for you? Yeah, G Herbo. Yeah, I like her too. Her yeah, You know what I'm saying? For, for me, bro, I was uh, so like I said I was born and raised in the rural, but I was going to Oak Park. I was at Oak right. Park in the forest. Yeah, and it was this girl. She came and she was playing uh that kill shit. Herb and Herb and Bibby. Yeah, and it, I was man, like sophomore, so that came on. I'm like, oh, let me hear that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm playing it. I'm like, right, I kind of rock with it. But then when I heard that, Welcome to Phaso Land, bro. That was yeah, it. Am I wrong? I was talking to somebody this the other day. Am I wrong for when him and Bibby first started out? I was a Bibby fan over Herb at first. At I first. was too. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Bibby was hard to me. Yeah, Bibby was Bibby, when they was younger. Bibby, Bibby was definitely better. I think I think Bibby was better. Like a lot yeah. of people on him, but it, it, when Herb got that uh that feature with Nicki, it took off from there. It yep. took off from there. It was just the yeah. clout. It was the clout. But let me yeah. ask you this though: I know that show Sean one. You know, no, nah, you, hey, hey, bro, you, sure? hey, you the guest, bro. Be comfortable. Hey, who got the city though? Dirk or Herb? Oh, Dirk. Oh, that's man. Dirk. I'm, I agree. I Dirk, agree. Right? No, Dirk ain't got the city. Dirk got the world right now. I ain't gonna say, bro, he up there. Ain't nobody fucking with Lil Baby right now. Right now, bro, in the world, Dirk got it. Lil Baby, you over Lil Baby? Until Lil Baby drops something, 
Dirk, Dirk been dropping like crazy. Some. He just dropped some. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Everything. The what? I think it's called on me, on me, and everything, and everything. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But then Dirk dropped something again. Then Dirk, Dirk been dropping like crazy. His last mix, his last the thing he just dropped, it wasn't like that. And I'm a big Dirk fan. It, it, the one he just dropped with the voice, uh, the one with uh, Vaughn on it. The voice, yeah. yeah. No, no, that wasn't like that. The one he just made with um, what is that called? The, the one voice, he made the before new one. that. No, nah, I'm talking about the one like from last year, from 2020, with viral moment and all love on it. And he made like a uh, he made like a bonus CD to that. I think I know what you're with, talking with about. Three headed monsters, Polo G, all them on there. I know what you're talking about. I can't think of the name of it. That one was hard. That one was hard. Do so you know, you don't rock with the voice? Solid. I like the I like the you talking about the single or the he got a mix nah, the whole the, mix the album. It's solid. It ain't it wasn't nothing like I was so I was so hyped on. Uh, the other joint. I wish I could say the name of that fucking album. I was so hyped on the other joint. I feel like he digressed with that one. Right now, I think is that got the this, the world right now a lot. It's definitely Dirk, Baby, Pooh Shiesty. Pooh Shiesty got a clown. He got it going right now. Um, damn, I can't think of nobody else right now. Who else got? Who else popping right now? Um, just cause y'all waited. My girl said it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's the yeah, that's the yeah. That that one hard. That's the one I'm talking about. That's cool. Yeah, so I think Dump Three right now got the streets. I can't think of nobody else. But I think yeah. Dirk definitely got it right now. Until baby drop him a another man. album. You that um damn, how'd it go? I feel like baby ain't dropped the album in a minute, bro. I feel like when he dropped that album, that's he, he just made the um he just made no, the deluxe bro. album from um uh, from the other one last year. That's, that's what I'm bro. saying. As a fan, bro, we want them all to continue. We want, like, NBA Youngboy. How that man, you want them people to drop? That man, that, bro, that man, but like, Future. Hey, bro, if you spend yeah. it, if you spend it all day, I'd rather you drop, you know what I'm saying, drop, drop, instead yeah, of drop. me having to wait two years for some, and then, like, it don't hit the same. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like Herb. Herb yeah. is probably Herb is my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? Nip, you know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna make no more music besides what he got. Right. But G Herbo, that's my that's my guy. Him and him and Moneybag. Moneybag hard too. Yeah. When G Herbo really was talking about that PTSD album, bro, we was talking about it for four, five years before we got it. But when it dropped, it hit the same. Like, it, it it, you know what I'm saying? It didn't feel right. Now that welcome to phase of when you when you yeah. anticipating it and we waiting for it, you dropping it, it ain't all that. Yeah, that's my man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I had a conversation about just overall the whole city of uh, no matter the time. So we were saying like first we was talking about somebody I said Kanye. And then after that, somebody said Juice World. Hey. But I, I to be let me say this. Let me say this. I I wasn't a big fan of Juice World, but I respect Oh, me neither. Him. Me neither. But I respect them. Yeah. They, like it's a lot of people that you can say, like I don't think he did enough, but they just talking about like the global impact. They was like, shorty, everybody's listening to him. Yeah. He's global. Like me yeah. personally, that ain't my type of music, but I respect it. Like I listen yeah. to it. it. Was like, okay, you feel me? I see where you're going with it. But you put him on that type of pedestal to be in a conversation right after Yay. It was it's so many. No, nah, unless they talk about numbers, bro. They might be talking I think about that's what the, I think that's what they was talking about. Yeah, because he was up there with like Uzi Vert and all them with them numbers, yeah. like. And they were saying he like, dropped. He, it was like worldwide, everybody was bumping it. So I think that's what they meant, because lyric wise and, and, and you know, not yeah, even yeah, that's why I was like, huh? Like it, it was like I don't, I don't know. I, I guess, man. Uh, yeah, was, not like, even close. Know. Like rest in peace to to to, to Juice. Were you right. rock with Vaughn? Yeah, I, I, I rock with Vaughn. I rock with Vaughn. I kind of got on Vaughn late, you know what I'm saying? I, I did I hate, too. I did too. I kind of hate when somebody died and I get on to him after yeah. the fact. I hate that because I feel like I'm just doing it to help, you know what I'm saying? Because at first I wasn't giving his like his mixtapes a chance or his albums a chance because I just kept hitting the same flow. No yeah, that's what it was for me. It was like a Crazy Story 1, Crazy Story 2, 2.0, yep. 3. And I was like, all right, bro, yeah. like, we get it. You feel me? Yeah. Bro? It, they all was hard, but Facts. you feel me? But I ain't gonna Facts. lie, this I actually listened to his album. Well, obviously he was, you know, deceased, and it was it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Okay. Um, few more, like two more questions, bro. I'm gonna go. On, you know, what I'm saying I ain't gonna hold you too much longer. 
right. Uh, what's the best piece of advice somebody's ever gave you before? What's the best piece of advice somebody ever gave me before? Uh, just stay consistent and be you. Yeah. You know I'm saying never try to be your, be be somebody different just for a certain type of crowd. You know what I'm saying? Just be happy with yourself. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the rest will take it. That's that's for your mental. Like you trying to be something else, you doing some extra shit. You know what I'm saying? Just be yourself and stay consistent. And then the world is yours. You feel me? That's yeah. all life is about. Consistency and staying in your own self, staying in your own body, staying in your own lane. Right. So uh, it's simple, but a lot of people don't follow those guidelines and they be all over the place. You know, all over the place. You know what I'm saying. So yeah. just staying consistent and and being yourself. You know what I'm saying. Like I never have to fake and or be nobody else around a certain crowd. To how I'm like, how I'm talking to you is how I'm talking when I'm on a business call or I'm. You feel me? I'm just yeah. myself. You know, what I mean? mm-hmm. you gonna take it how you how you get it. I ain't gonna do nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying. But just be yourself, man. A lot of yeah. people don't do that at all. Yeah, let me, let me, I'm going to throw this one here real quick because I see my little bro EJ just hopping in. EJ, so for a, a, young, a young hooper, you know what I'm saying, somebody like EJ, bro, right. if you was to just talk to him and give him some advice to help him learn from some of the state, mistakes that you made or we all made, what would you tell that young hooper to help them so they don't make them the same mistakes and to help them get to that next level that you learned? That I learned? Yes. Yeah. Uh, stay in the gym. Simple, but... Everything else, don't let the outside life get into your mind. Like you feel me? Like I, I was, I was, I was, I was working out pretty heavy, but I also want to kick it a little bit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you gonna notice that that shit gonna be there. You know what I'm saying? Them girls gonna be there. You know what I'm saying? Them same dudes doing the same things gonna be there. So just focus on your goals and everything else to take care of yourself. Just be consistent in that gym. Stay in that gym, bro. If this is what you want to do. This is what you want to pursue. Ain't no, ain't no way around it, bro. Yeah. Just eliminate all that extra stuff around you because it's going to come a time when temptation is going to be a mug. You feel me? Like, you got the girls on your side. You got your homies want to kick it and go to this party and get some yeah. get some liquor. But, you know what I'm saying? The great ones stay in their lane and be they self and stay consistent at what they doing and get it done. You feel me? So that's my advice to Guys like EJ and all these shorties, man. Like Chicago, it's easy to get in trouble. It's yeah. easy to it's easy to to, to 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 venture off into some negativity. You feel me? Because yeah. like I said, it's so much to do in Chicago. You know, so unfortunately, these little moms out here. You feel me? Crazy. So you just want to keep a, a, a you know what you want to do. Just stay consistent and do it. Facts. Decisions, my... choices. <laughs> yeah, facts. And then my last one, my last one for you, Brody, is you know who would you like you know that, to see on here to pretty much tell their story, you know what I'm saying, and get some motivation to the youth and just you know what I'm saying, kick back, you know what I'm saying, talk a little sports. So yeah, uh, let me see. You had I, I, I went to your page. You had a, a a lot of people on here. I'm trying, um, man. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to think. I know I talked to I talked to Mike, you know what I'm saying? We trying to set something up with his schedule, get a little free. Yeah, Mike yeah, Mike, yeah, Mike. I mean, you talked to Aubrey. I would say Eddie. Eddie got a lot to offer for the youth or you know what I mean, Eddie Denard. Uh I'm trying to get uh Tone Tone, man, but I don't you know I don't think somebody I can somebody like somebody like Tone Tone or somebody like uh it'd be cool you can get like Sawyer or something like Mario Sawyer, any of those dudes that was like high level guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That had a lot, like that man had, or Ronnie Field, somebody like that, man. Them dudes got a lot to offer for the city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, I've been trying to get in touch with Tom Tom. I hit him on Facebook, but I don't think he got messages. So I need I, to. Another person, too. This probably be the one for me. You got to, he was a guy for me, but I would love to hear. Even me, I would love to hear what's on his brain. Somebody like Will, a uh, Saron Connors, and Will Bonner. If you can get one of those two, I'm sure Saron would do it. I'm sure. I've been trying to hit him, bro. It's it's hard to get in touch with dudes like that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah I should. Like him and Will, like I talk to Will. You know what I'm saying? Like he'll be on live or something. I will hit him up. He'll be like, "Yeah, I do." And then like, I send him a DM, and it's like, 
You know what I'm saying? He get busy. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's hard to get in touch with people yeah, like that. Do, so I be, yeah, they, they always move, and I feel you. Yeah, but so yeah, I've been I've been trying to use like connections and be like, yo, put in a word from me. You know what I'm saying? Man, little EJ, little EJ, you you know what I'm saying? Little EJ, go and set that up. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, little EJ, 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 right? That's his boy. He be working out with him. Yeah, go on, little EJ, yeah. go and set that up. Hit Will for me. Tell him to hit me back. Yeah, so, man. my guy, man, I appreciate you, bro, for you know what I'm saying, tapping in with me for a little bit. You know what I'm oh, saying? Man. Talking a little sports, bro. You know, we just oh, met, man. though. You know what I'm saying? But it's all love for me to you, it's bro. It's all love, bro. Appreciate uh, it. Appreciate like you, I said, man. Hopefully, yeah. when uh, the, the world opened back up, bro, I had this little basketball event I do when I raise money for the youth or something like that, bro. So, go on, pop out to the birds, man. You know what I'm saying? Playing my event and all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going to stay in touch, though, bro. You know what I'm saying? Stay safe. You know what I'm saying? Stay out the way. Keep grinding. And like I said, all love for me, bro. Oh, for sure. Likewise, bro. Love. Appreciate you, my dog. For, for, for sure, sure, bro. All right. All right.